So welcome everyone to Patagonia Community Yoga. Wednesday night, it's spring, but you wouldn't know it here in Colorado because it's snowing buckets outside. And um, yeah, we were camping this weekend. And spring here has just been such a tease. Like, you know, it's 70 and then it's just dumping snow. <laughs> 70, dumping snow, trees, branches falling. Um, and when we were camping, we were out on the Western slope doing some biking and insane winds were just coming through on Saturday night, which was part of this new storm system that's coming in. And so I got to thinking a lot about winds and I had also briefly touched on them last week. Um, and so we're going to touch on all five of them tonight. But to start, let's see. We'll actually do hero's pose to start. So getting into a really grounded base. You can also do thunderbolt pose if that feels better, but you wanna grab a block most likely. So hero's pose or virasana, um, knees together, heels apart, wide enough to sit down between, pull your calves down and sit down between your heels. Now, for me right now, that means my hips are actually hovering over the ground. So that's why it's nice to pull in a block to sit up onto. You can also take Thunderbolt Pros, which is heels together so that you have your heels to sit back onto with your hips. So choose props and the position which support you tonight. And if both of those don't feel great on your knees, then take a block or a pillow and actually put it on top of your heels so that you're a little bit more elevated. And then bring your eyes to close, hands down onto your thighs. Start to tune out some of the exterior senses, the sight being our most prominent one and sound. Begin to tune into just your body composed here on the mat. The gentle rhythm of your breath, keeping your spine nice and stacked. And again, with your eyes closed, so that you can start to tap into more of the subtle body experience as I go through these five values or winds of prana. So, this is prana with a capital P meaning uh, life force energy. And then these values, these five winds, are what happen inside of our body. And so by practicing tuning into those energy flows, we'll call them, you can start to control and govern and become a little bit more attuned when you feel out of balance. So the first one is prana value, right? And you're like, what? She just said prana twice. This is prana with a little p. So not like life force prana, but the prana value being the lifting up. So you feel this on your inhale. And I talked about this just briefly last week. So you really notice this a lot in your chest when your lungs inflate and you feel this rise. So that's prana value. And then the next one is kind of in opposition to that, and that is apana value. And that's a downward wind. So feeling grounded. And right here on the mat, in your hero's pose or thunderbolt pose, you can start to feel that grounding happening through your hips down into your heels, your shins on the mat. It's also a letting go or excretion. 
secretion, excretion. So this has to do with how your body lets go of things. It comes out through your hair. It can come out through your exhale, your breath. Um, menstruation, I'm potty training right now, my toddler. So poop, there's lots of poop over here. But poop is getting rid of apana by you. All right. The next one is called samana. And that's a balancing. I like to think of this one as kind of like a, a whirling in where you process and you digest your emotions, your food, everything that you put into your body. You assimilate, you integrate. This is also really focused in our lower abdominals. So if you just ate lunch, <laughs> you can think about Samana Vayu, right? Taking in that nutrients, right? And then the next one is Udana. U-D-A-N-A, -A, Udana. And that one is expression or manifestation. So you can think of that one as your voice. It also is this energetic flow that helps you concentrate, helps you uh, meditate, dream, speak, grow. Okay. So it's what you do with that, everything that you absorb. So I like to think of samana and udana kind of together, like prana and apana. And then the last one is vayana. B Y A N A. And that one is expansion out through the whole body. So actually take your hands and expand them out to the side, fingertips reaching. So this is the life force in your body radiating out to every single cell, expanding out. I also like to think of this as your expression of your body. So putting together all of these shapes, right? What you put your body into. Inhale, stretch your arms up overhead. Fingertips reaching straight up to the ceiling. Inhale, find a little lift. So prana, even hover your hips a little bit higher. Exhale, apana. Bring your arms down, wrap your arms around yourself. Samana, so open and then again, wrap. Imagining that you're drawing things in, digesting, integrating, finding this swirling in your body. And then exhale, ha, ah, listen for the sound of your breath out. Finding a manifestation, an expression. Inhale. And then exhale again, audible. <sighs> that is udana. And then release your arms one more time. Stretch them out. Vayana, expansion. Taking all of these energies, finding a balance, and then radiating. Slowly bring your hands down and come up into all fours. So let your legs go back with what I like to tap the tops of my feet down on the mat. You can move your hips a little bit from side to side, maybe even extend and then. Bring in your legs. And then take your knees wide, press your hips back, find a brief child's pose. Letting your forehead rest down onto the mat. Breathe in. 
and out. Again, inhale and exhale. Now inhale, slowly come back up onto all fours. You're gonna bring your legs around, find a comfortable seat, seat. <laughs> and then find your strap. So we're gonna get into our shoulders. And as we're moving through, sometimes I'll cue you to think of those winds, those five winds in our subtle body movement. And sometimes you can just find where you might feel those. So you're gonna take your arms out in front of you, grabbing your strap, your scarf, whatever long item you have, a belt works just fine. We're gonna slowly start to stretch our shoulders. So I like to call this flossing our shoulders, even though disclaimer, I don't floss my teeth. Inhale, arms up. You wanna raise your arms up at the same height. So they're in the same plane. And then exhale, you'll let them drop back behind you. Now you might need to let your hands slip on that strap so that you can bring them down evenly. Inhale, pull your arms up. Keep the strap taut between your hands. So you're pulling out and then exhale, bring it down in front of you. Inhale up, find a lift. Exhale, drop your hands back. This is where you should feel a real big stretch. Nice open in the front of your pectorals. Inhale up through your nose, lift, and then exhale forward. Now you might notice, you'll keep doing this with your breath, that there are some spots where it gets a little sticky, right? You might even feel some carbon releasing, some little pops in your shoulders. And so if you feel like this rotation is a little bit jagged, maybe there's some bumps in the road, you can pause there and just gently work back and forth in that tight spot or that spot that feels not so smooth. Otherwise, we'll do this just a couple more times, following our breath, letting that be the lead. So find the integration here, stretching your hands, pulling them out wide. Inhale, reaching up, spreading out with your hands, up and out, and then exhale down. Last time through. Really waking up those shoulders, noticing where it's tight, taking assessment as to what's going on in this part of your body tonight or day. Release that strap, bring it out to the side. And Take your hands, interlace them in front of you, and then stretch them up. Bring the palms forward, keeping your fingers interlaced, and then press them out, starting to straighten your arms and then bring them up as high as you can. So depending on how much mobility you have in your shoulders, maybe they just go forward. Potentially they can go up overhead, stretching the palms up towards the ceiling drop a little bit back behind you. You don't want to find pain or strain here. Instead, just opening through the inside of our arms, right? So across the inside of our elbows. Take another deep breath in. And then exhale, slowly break your hands apart and come down to the side. Bring your hands down to the mat. Again, we're gonna find child's pose. Knees out wide, big toes together to touch. Press your hips back over your heels, stretch your arms forward, grip down, and then let your forehead come down. Starting to waken up our body, making this a little bit more of a full body expansion. Grip your fingers into the mat. Keep pulling your hips back, take an inhale. And then exhale, can you set your chest down a little bit closer to the mat? Inhale, 
into your upper back, feel your ribs expand, feel that little lift. And then exhale, can you let your forehead lie heavier on the mat? One more time, inhale. And exhale. Now gaze up at your hands. You want your palm shoulder width distance apart. You're gonna come forward, tuck your toes, lift up through plank. So shoulders over your wrists, and then toes tucked. Inhale, exhale, bend your knees gently. So they come to hover over the mat and start to press your hips back over your heels and begin to make your legs a little bit straighter, moving into a downward facing dog very gently, keeping your knees bent so you're not totally locking them out ever. And then pressing your hips up and back. Inhale. And exhale. Keep integration with your fingers, your toes, your spine. Relax your head, take another breath in. And breath out. One more time, pull forward into plank. Exhale, bend your knees, press back into downward facing dog. I said one more time. I meant this is a start of a movement. Inhale, roll forward into plank. Exhale, bend your knees, press back, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, plank. Exhale, back. Last time forward, inhale, plank. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Then you're gonna let your knees gently come down to the mat. Keep your hips over your knees, walk your hands forward, and then keeping your elbows lifted, arms straight, bring your forehead down to the mat. Keep your hips high up in the air. You're gonna melt your heart down towards the mat. Feel that space between both of your shoulder blades coming together and then getting a little bit heavy. So this is called Anahata Asana or heart melting pose. Pretty descriptive in its Sanskrit term. So really finding here that grounding upon energy and also a little bit of that assimilation like bringing everything in finding what you need what is balanced and what feels a little bit out and then as you lie here letting your shoulders slowly open through this stretch think back to those five values and is there one in particular that just seems a little bit out of balance? Or maybe that you've never thought of? Or maybe that triggered something right now that you're going through? So uplifting, maybe in your chest prana, downward or expelling of things, kind of sifting through what you need and what you don't need, upana, navel. Samana, a balancing, a swirling in, a processing. Or Vayana, expansion, just letting yourself radiate. And then Udana, expression or manifestation. Maybe thinking of something going on in your chest, your throat, being able to communicate. From your puppy pose, keeping your hands grounded, inhale, come up, bring your shoulders back over your palms, tuck your toes, and inhale, lift back up into a plank position. 
Now, if your wrists are feeling a little bit fatigued tonight, you can always take this down in a forearm plank. You want to walk your toes back. So your heels are really lifted. And then gaze at the length of your body. Make sure that you have your feet hip width distance apart. Inhale here, holding yourself very strong. Then exhale, bring both heels over to the left. All right? Try and keep your chest square to the mat, pressing evenly through both hands, even though a little bit more weight is moving into the left. You'll find that in your obliques on the left side, you're doing a lot of work. Inhale, pull your heels up to center. And then exhale, drop your heels over to the right. Feel that pressure build in your right palm and press through your right hand into the mat. Feel your obliques, the side bodies turn on and integrate. Inhale, come back into center. And then exhale over to the left. Try and not let your hips move out to the side. Instead, still a straight line from feet to the crown of your head. Inhale through center. Exhale to the right. So ground down through the side and then the inside edge of that foot and still pull your chest forward. Inhale, last time to the left. Inhale, center, exhale to the right. Then inhale, center, bring your knees down to the mat and drop down to your forearms. You're going to either set yourself up with forearms parallel to each other and biceps directly under shoulders. So take a good grip of your biceps with your hands, walk your elbows so they're directly underneath your shoulders, and then extend your hands back out. Now, if your shoulders felt really tight and maybe just not fully turned on yet when you were doing that flossing exercise, then interlace your hands and press the pinky edge down. Otherwise, you'll keep your palms open wide like parallel tree trunks right next to each other. Gaze back down the length of your knees, tuck your toes, and lift up for dolphin pose. So dolphin pose is like downward facing dog in the bottom half of your body and a forearm plank in the upper part of your body. Keep pressing your palms into the mat and then squeeze your elbow tips towards each other so that they don't creep out to the side, but instead stay firmly planted on the mat in a, in a shoulder width distance. All right, this is a lot of work. Inhale, you're gonna lift your heels, walk your toes in as close as they'll go. And if your hamstrings are tight, you can walk them out to the edges of your mat. And then exhale, press through your palms, ground your forearms down and shift your chest a little bit more through your arms. So you feel the weight moving into your feet. Relax the crown of your head so your head stays lifted off of the mat. Inhale, butt neck relaxed. Maybe walk your toes in a little bit closer. And exhale. One more time again. Inhale, prana, find that lift. But now it's a little bit backwards. The lift is in your hips. And then exhale, grounding through your feet and through your hands. Now move your gaze into your forearms. Slowly walk your feet back, coming into forearm plank. Take a breath in here. Keep grounding down through your hands. Woo. And then exhale, lower your hips down. Press the tops of your feet down. Grip down now even more through your hands. And if you're Fingers were interlaced, then bring them out wide because we don't have weight bearing anymore. And then pull your chest through your biceps, sphinx pose. Press your hips down, especially if you feel any contraction or pinchiness in your low back. Inhale. And exhale. All right, from here. Bend your knees, tuck your toe, 
Press yourself back. Walk your hands back. And then lift yourself up into a shortened down dog. Take a breath in. And out, relax your neck. Inhale. Exhale, begin to walk yourself forward to the front of your mat. Uttanasana, forward fold. You can take as deep of a fold as feels good, or maybe even pull in some of those props to press your hands into, especially if your hamstrings are a little bit tight. And we'll start to move a little bit more. And with each inhale, let that trigger that thought of, again, wind. The prana vayu, taking in that energy, just noticing where it flows in your body. Right. Inhale, press into your shins, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch your arms up overhead. And then exhale, bring your thumbs down to your sternum. Press your palms into each other. Find a nice strong standing pose. Lift your kneecaps, engage your quads, press down through your feet. Finding that balance here. Finding that assimilation. And then inhale, press your arms up. Exhale, fold. You're going to step your left leg back into a nice long lunge and lower your left knee down. Now, if your mat is a little bit thin and you're on hard surface, you can always curl under the side of that mat so you've got a little extra cushion underneath that left side. Press the top of your foot down. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Draw your right knee forward. And let your hips start to shift a little bit forward, opening up your left psoas. Keeping your legs strong, press the top of your back foot down, lift your gaze, inhale. And then exhale, reach your arms forward, forward, forward. And then you're gonna plant the left hand inside of the right foot and start to sweep the right arm down across the mat and back. Inhale, arc up. And then exhale, circulate down. Windmilling your right arm. Inhale up. And exhale down. Keep shifting forward. Inhale up. Exhale down. And once it starts reaching back, pause. Begin to bend your back leg. With your right hand, reach back. See if you can capture that left foot. And if you can't capture that left foot, you might need to shift your right foot a little bit more forward. You might need to grab that strap or scarf or belt, lassoing that back foot. Or maybe you just bend it up as much as you can and you just reach energetically, finding that connection between space, foot to hand. If you have a hold of your quad and you're like, I think I need to go a little bit deeper, you can always start to walk this left hand forward, maybe bringing the forearm down to the mat. Whew, really stretching out the quad. If you get a little bit of a hamstring cramp while you're in this quad stretch, try pushing your foot a little bit more into your right hand. And then let your gaze drop down towards your right foot. Maybe even close your eyes. And take three more deep breaths here. Maybe letting your hips shift a little bit more forward. Inhale. Press into that area that is tight. And then exhale. See if you can. Keep that integration, but also let go. I like to say it's an 80% on the exhale. And inhale. And then last time, exhale. Slowly release that left foot. Bring both hands to the front of the mat. Framing your right foot. Tuck your left toes. 
And then take a big step forward back into Uttanasana at the front of your mat. Forward fold. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep your arms wide, come all the way up to standing. And then exhale, bring your hands together at heart center. So a lot of times when we stand in this Tadasana, Samastitihi, with our feet both pressing down into the mat, our palms pressing evenly into each other, we think this is balance, right? We have equal and opposite reaction on all sides. It's really easy to hold everything together. So what happens when things are a little bit out of an asymmetry? Is that still balance? What does balance look like? Does it always look perfect or what we think of as perfect? Inhale, press your arms up. And then exhale, fold. As your fingertips come down, step your right leg back, bring your right knee down, and then press through the top of the right foot. Sweep your arms forward and up. Inhale, Anjaneyasana on the opposite side. Left leg forward, draw your left knee over your left ankle. Start to feel an opening on your right psoas. So let your hips shift, hips shift forward keep stretching your arms up integrate in your core to help you find that lift inhale and exhale inhale and exhale inhale begin to tip forward reaching your fingertips for it exhale plant the right hand down to the inside and then let your left fingertips drop back. Inhale, windmill them up. And exhale down. Do that three more times. Inhale, finding a nice rotation in your shoulders. Exhale. Last time. Inhale. And exhale. And once your left hand is reaching back along your left side, Again, shift a little bit forward in your right knee, or in your left knee, rather. Taking the lunge a little bit deeper and then begin to bend the right knee. Reach back, finding your right foot for that quad stretch. So it's really important that you're forward and not pressing straight down on your kneecap. Because when you bend your knee, it's a lot of pressure. Instead, you want to be so much so forward that when you bend your right knee, you're actually on the connection, the head of your quad, right? That is where we are focusing our energy. So make any adjustments, pull in any props, find an energetic connection between fingers and hands if they don't reach. And then start to bring your chin a little bit down towards your chest so that your spine is long. Soften your gaze or close your eyes and take three deep breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, pull the energy in. Exhale, let it radiate out to all of your most far pieces of your body, fingers, toes tips of your hair. Inhale. And exhale, slowly release that foot. Bring your left hand down to meet your right. Tuck your back toes and then lift your back knee up. You're gonna take your left leg and bring it back to your right. So you're in plank pose. You're not moving to the front of the mat. Then bring both knees back down to the mat and bring both forearms back down to the mat. So we're setting up for dolphin pose second time. Reach for opposite biceps, walk your shoulders in or elbows in so they're shoulder width distance apart, and then press either palms down or take an interlace in your hands. 
Tuck your toes, gaze between your knees so your neck is released, and then lift up and back, dolphin pose. Inhale, lift your heels, walk your toes in. Exhale, shift the weight more into your feet. Keep pressing your palms down. Keep pressing your forearms down. Inhale, see if you can walk your hips a little bit higher. Relax your head, keep your gaze back between your toes. Exhale, shift back. Do that one more time. Inhale, walk your feet in a little bit closer. Reach your hips high. Exhale, sustain, hold. You're gonna keep pressing down through your right foot. Inhale, lift your left leg up. Keep pressing your palms down. Don't let the weight move into your forearms. Instead, find balance between the front, your forearms, and the back, the right pad of your foot. Actively press through your left leg. Take another inhale. Exhale, bring the left leg down. So your feet are still hip width distance apart. Pause, take a breath in. And exhale. Move your gaze back between your toes if it shifted. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Keep pressing through your forearms so that your ears stay between your biceps. Lift and actively straighten your right leg. Take a breath in. And then exhale down. Take a breath in. Exhale, release your knees wide. Big toes together to touch. Keep your palms where they are and shift your hips back. Child's pose. Feel that heat that we created in our shoulders start to dissipate. Inhale into where you felt all of that activation. Exhale, let it start to radiate down your arms, up your neck, down your back. And inhale, and exhale. And inhale, shift back forward onto all fours, tuck your toes, lift up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, step your left foot forward, bring your right knee down. Anjaneyasana, but this time we're coming at it from the back of the mat. Press the top of your right foot down. Inhale, reach both of your arms up. And then exhale, release your hands behind you. You can either interlace your hands, starting to open your chest by pulling your fingertips down the right hamstring, or you can take opposite elbow if that feels better. That gives you a little bit of support. You press your forearms into your low back. In either variation, start to open your chest. So alternating between that heat in the shoulders and then a deep stretch in your shoulders. Keep your Navel drawing in, core engage. One more breath in. And then exhale, release your hands. Bring them down to frame the front foot. Slowly shift your hips back. So they stack in line with the right knee and then pull your left toes back. So just your heel is grounding down into the mat. Ardha Hanumanasana. Now this is where you might want a block or two or whatever creative props you've had, you've brought in tonight. You can bring both hands onto one on the inside or two framing your shin. If your fingertips can touch the mat without collapsing and rounding in your spine, you can just bring your hands right down. Pull your left femur head back. Inhale, reach your chin towards your left toes. And exhale, maybe bend your elbows a little bit. Fold. Inhale. 
and exhale. One more time, inhale and exhale. Inhale, come forward. Bend your left knee, stack your knee over your ankle, both hands on either side. And then you're gonna to start to bend that right knee again. Plant your right palm, reach back with your left hand, finding your quad, getting a nice quad stretch. Now this time, if you'd like to, and if it feels good, you can, keeping that front foot really active, let the knee come out to the side as you come forward. So I want you to, if you do take that variation, almost like a, a pigeon pose variation or a little bit like nuclear pigeon, I want you to make sure that you're keeping your foot flexed so that as you roll to the outside edge, all of the muscles are keeping the knee safe and the ankle safe, so there's no sickling. And slowly release the right foot. Bring the left knee back in and place both hands again to frame around your left foot. Tuck your back toes under. Inhale, come to a high lunge. Reach forward. You're gonna slowly transition into a vertical split. So if you have a prop, you can bring that with you and place that underneath your hands at the front of the mat. Otherwise, both hands still frame the left foot. Keep your right leg super active. And then if you notice that your right hip is lifting, do your best to bring it back down. I like to sometimes place a hand at my low back. This is just to check to see if it's truly flat or if I'm letting my ego get in the way and I'm like, this right leg is gonna be so high. But you're compromising your hips here by doing that. We want to keep them straight, keep them balanced. Let the neck release down so that the crown of your head is reaching towards the mat. And again, super straight lifted leg. Your standing leg can be a little bit bent if that feels good. Keep pressing down through that foot to the breath in. And out. Feel that movement, that energy moving in your body, breath in. And this time as you exhale, step back with your right foot. We're shifting into pyramid pose. So both legs are straight. Again, you can pull props in to place underneath your hands. Make sure you don't totally lock out that left leg. Instead, keep it slightly bent. And I like to pull the toes up on that top foot. That keeps my whole top of the foot, metatarsals all engaged, and then that comes all the way up to your knee. Pull your left femur head back and right hip forward. Breath in and breath out. You can either stay here in pyramid or start to sweep the left arm back. Inhale, windmill it up, and exhale around. This might be a little bit easier if you have a prop underneath that right side. Back, inhale up, and then exhale down. One more time. Inhale up, exhale forward, and down. Bend your front knee and then step back, downward facing dog. Press your hands into the mat, bend your knees, pedaling out your legs. And then find stillness for one breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, lift your right leg up. And then exhale, bring your right foot forward. Lower your left knee down and press the top of your left foot down. Inhale, sweep your arms up. 
And then exhale, bring your hands back behind you. If you're taking an interlace, try and do the opposite finger on top. Press your palms together or grabbing opposite forearm or maybe elbow. Inhale, open your chest. Exhale, can you shift that right knee a little bit more forward? Let your pelvis start to move forward and down. Inhale, open your chest, feel your lungs in place. Exhale, find that grounding. See if you can let go of something. And inhale. And exhale. Release your hands. Bring them to frame your front foot. And then shift your hips back, straightening your right leg. Heel your right toes up, ground your right heel down. Pull your right femur head back. And again, you want to just come back far enough so that you stack hip over your knee, your back knee. So if you go all the way back, you're not really getting a great hamstring stretch. So find that edge, pull your toes back, bring in the prop if you need to, or props on either side. Inhale, pull your chin forward towards your right big toe. And then exhale, let your elbows bend just slightly. Inhale, and exhale. Again, inhale, and exhale. Feel your heel in, stomp your right foot down and bend your right knee. Plant your left hand down on the mat. Then you wanna shift forward and then bend your back left leg. With your right hand, reach around, capture your right or your left foot, and then shift forward into your quad strap. If you did so on the other side, you'll flex the right foot and start to roll over to the outside edge of your right foot, keeping that foot flex, arch really lifted, maybe slightly bending in the left elbow. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Noticing how this shape, this manifestation feels in your body. Does it feel like you can get down into those tight spots? Does it feel really out of balance maybe? Does it feel like just what you needed? Or does it feel like, ugh, I'm not strong enough. <laughs> Need to do this more. There's lots of things that can come up. Potentially just out of balance. Slowly release the left leg, bring the right foot back down. Both hands to frame that right foot and then tuck your left toes, lift your back knee up. So finding a little bit of that balance. You're going to shift forward, walk your hands forward, slowly lift your left leg up for vertical splits, opening up that right hamstring. Keep your left leg super straight, and you can pull a block in or a prop underneath your hands. Inhale, exhale, fold. Notice if you're lifting your left leg up super high and your left hip is coming with it, do an ego check, bring that left hip back down. You'll feel how it, the squaring of your hips allows you to open more right at the head, the connection of your hamstring into the top of your femur. Inhale and exhale, fold. Maybe bend the standing leg a little bit, but do your best to keep the left leg, the lifted leg, super strong. One more breath in, and then exhale. You're gonna step back with the left leg. It's almost like a teeter-totter back into pyramid pose. Then you can pull a block in underneath the right or the left hand. Pull your right hip back in to, or left leg into the hip. 
And then start to sweep the right arm back. Inhale up. And exhale down, grazing the mat. Inhale up. And exhale down. Last time up. And down, plant both hands, bend your front leg, and step back into downward facing dog. All right, from here we're going to shift into turbo dog, which if you've never done that before, and maybe you're not familiar with forest yoga, I don't know if we do this in any other lineage, um, take a knee, make sure you can see the screen. So turbo dog is a real shoulder shoulder burner. It's good. Um, so what you're going to do is just like in down dog, hands are shoulder width distance apart. But you're going to bend your elbows to hover and zip them in towards each other. Keep pressing through your pointer finger and your thumb. I'll do this from the side and shoulder width distance apart. Elbows hover, draw them in towards each other. And then you're going to lift up in your leg, so it's like down dog, and it's like you were in dolphin, but then you just lifted your elbow tips up. Keep drawing your elbow tips towards each other. Take a deep breath into your upper back. You might feel a little bit shaky. Exhale, can you bring your elbows down a little bit closer? Bring a deep breath in. Feel the strength, feel the heat building. Exhale, maybe let your heels get a little bit closer than that. Last time, deep breath in, keep pressing through your palms, and then exhale, Whew. come down. Bring your knees together, hips over your heels, and then you're gonna reach your arms back, palms up on the outside of your feet. Let your forehead come down. Let your shoulders shrug forward, embryo pose. So as your shoulders shrug forward, your shoulder blades start to move forward and away from your spine. Take a deep breath in, feeling the back of your ribs expand. And full exhale, letting all of the air come out. Again, just this puddle of bones and muscle on the floor, letting everything go. Take a deep breath in, find that expansion, that little space between your ribs and your upper back. And exhale. Do that one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Bring your hands back forward. Forearms down to the mat. We're gonna do one last bounce. This time it's not going to be symmetrical. It's not going to be even, but we have the muscles, we have the integration to hold ourselves up. You're gonna place your forearms down on the mat in front of you. Grip onto your biceps, bring your hands back down. Keep your left forearm down on the mat and with your right hand, shift it back. So you're like railroad tracks, just letting that right hand back. Fingers are gonna come behind your elbow. All right, there we go. All right, so fingers are going to come behind your elbows. You're going to plant that right palm down. Then tuck your toes and lift your knees up. Keep that right elbow is going to feel a little bit limp, like it's not doing anything. Pull it in towards midline. Shift a little bit forward so you can press into that right palm. Press into the left forearm. And then see if you can find an even distribution of weight into both of your feet. So this is called flash prep or uneven peacock. There's lots of fun names for it. 
but it's a balancing pose where our arms are skewed, right? So we have to re-wrap our brain around where to shift our weight to find that balance. And then you can try lifting one leg, lifting the other leg. There's no right leg to lift or a wrong leg to lift. And then slowly bring your knees down and bring both forearms to meet. So coming back into that forearm plank, but knees down on the mat. Inhale, press your upper back towards the ceiling. And then exhale, let your chest melt and shrug. One more time. Inhale, finding that integration. And then exhale, finding that release. Spread through your right palm, press it down into the mat, keep your right forearm where it is, shift the left hand back. So if there was a line behind your right elbow, you want your left fingertips to be behind that line. So it's pretty far back, right? It's just like a schism, a skew. All right, and then from there, tuck your toes, lift your hips up, and draw that left elbow in. Sometimes I actually even bring my left hand or the back hand even farther back. So that as I move the weight forward, there is a weight stacking down from my left elbow into my left palm. So that's keeping you nice and balanced. Gaze is back towards your toes. Take an inhale. Keep pressing through your forearm in the front, finding that integration so you're not sagging in this front shoulder. Instead, you have strength. And then lift one leg. And the other. So a lot of balance and then hamstrings, shoulder strength, everything working together to find, to manifest the shape. One more time, maybe shifting to your legs. And then exhale, slowly come down. Again, find that embryo pose, forehead down, palms up on the sides of your legs. Let your forehead melt down. Take an inhale, expand open in your upper back. And exhale, melt. One more inhale. And exhale. Reach your hands back forward. Slowly lift your hips up. Coming onto our belly. So I'm gonna cue final shavasana on your belly. Palms stacked so that you have something to set your forehead down onto so that you're not squishing your face. You don't want to be prone for your shavasana. You can feel free to just flip it around so that you're lying on your back. Start to, again, bring your awareness back to your breath. Feeling your lungs and your belly inflate with each inhale. And deflate with each exhale. Finding that lift up. And then melting down. Finding that balance, that pulling in integration, digestion on the inhale. And on the exhale, that expansion, letting that energy pull out to the very tips of your fingers, your toes, to your hips, into the crown of your head. Inhale. This time, really noticing your breath as it moves across your throat. And then exhale. Pondering your expression, your manifestation. Let's 
two more deep breaths in. And out. Last time, inhale. And exhale. Gently using your hands, press yourself, chest up, and then roll onto one side into a fetal position. And gently pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat. Your shoulders up and back, the other direction. And then bring your palms together to heart center. Be curious, follow your bliss. Namaste. Namaste. Ah. <laughs> <sighs>